Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another direct to YouTube special. This one brought to you by Sean S, who donated to see their legacy mud deck in action. So mud is a deck that used to be built around the card Metalworker. Tap and reveal any number of artifact cards from your hand, and you get two colorless mana for each card revealed this way. And in a primarily colorless deck, Metalworker did some very silly things in terms of acceleration. Now, there's a whole bunch of different versions of Metalworker. Some play a lot like a prison deck, some play closer to an aggro deck, some of them play closer to a combo deck with Kaldoltha Forgemaster searching up a Blightsteel when you make it hasty with Lightning Greaves. And this version is kind of somewhere in the middle. We have a lot of prison elements. We have the classic Chalice of the Void and Trinisphere combo, as well as Lodestone Golem. But we also have a bunch of aggressive options. When you just have a bunch of mana from a metal worker, just pumping 10 mana into a stone coil serpent is kind of gross all on its own, especially since it will dodge a decent number of removal spells at that point. And we have, of course, fan favorite Crystalline Giant, which is just one of the most fun cards that I've ever played with in Magic. Like, the randomness is so fun, uh, at least on Magic Online, where you don't have to keep track of the counters on your own. In paper, I imagine it's a little bit of a pain. Um, the deck does have an, a, a literal infinite combo. If you have a Metalworker that produces at least four mana, so you have at least two other artifacts in hand, you can a four, you can get four mana with Metalworker, use three of it to untap Metalworker, and net one mana. And then you can make infinite um, mana with Staff of Domination. Uh, well, okay, sorry, you need at least three. I forgot you have to uh, untap the Staff itself. So you need three artifacts in hand. And then you can, at least in theory, gain infinite life, draw infinite cards, all that sort of stuff. Um, on Magic Online, um, you probably play with Staff of Domination until you get bored of clicking on things, and then you pass the turn and kill your opponent the next turn. Uh, it's one of those things that in paper it's very nice. On Magic Online with all the clicking, eh, not so much. And we also have a pretty neat Karn the Great Creator uh, sideboard package here. And I want to highlight one card that I've never seen in a... Uh, wishboard before, and that's Ornithopter. So this might sound stupid, but I think this is actually a really good choice. There's a lot of times where you play this Karn and your opponent has one creature on board, and all you need to do is make it one turn cycle with that Karn around. And then you go and you get something like an Ensnaring Bridge, and you've got a harder lock. Well, Ornithopter is a zero drop that you can get off of that Karn to protect it for one turn cycle, um, and I think that's a really neat idea. I'm excited to see how that plays in practice. Note, so that we can have 12 different Karn wish targets, we are only playing three ley lines, um, rather than the traditional four that you tend to see in these uh, sorts of chalice decks. Another neat card we have here that doesn't see a lot of legacy play is Forsaken Monument. It's a double anthem for your colorless creatures, and it makes you get one additional mana from all of your stuff. It also is a little bit of life gain, which is neat. Um, there's a lot of text stapled onto one card here. Um, I'm really excited to see this deck in action. Uh, I'm in fact so so excited to see this deck in action that I jumped it ahead in the queue a little bit. But don't tell the people on YouTube. Definitely don't. <laughs> okay, folks, I hope you'll enjoy this video. Uh, if you do, you know, please click the like button or maybe subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying my legacy content. Um, that sort of thing means a lot and really helps out my content. Snap keep. I will have to decide which one of my cards I'm playing on turn one, uh, based on my opponent's play patterns here. Goblin Guide. A Chalice of the Void. But why don't we play that on turn one? Hmm. Let's make my Grim Monolith a little awkward. But I think I need to do this to protect my Crystalline Giant. And then I think my Crystalline Giant can probably take over the game. It'll brick wall the Goblin Guide. It'll be hard to kill. It can maybe get lifelink at some point. Um, we don't want to be on an Ancient Tomb opener versus this deck. Hey, <laughs> All right, Glimmer Post is great. Fourteen due to my ancient tombs.
Hardcast Rift Bolt would be annoying. So what I'm what I'm thinking about right now is like whether or not it's worth it to cast like a Grim Monolith so I can gain more life off a of Glimmer Post later by like not using that land this turn. Um, I don't think that's correct. I think I just need to play this and try to stabilize the board and hope they don't have a Rift Bolt or um, maybe an Exquisite Firecraft. Oh, that's two Rift Bolts. <laughs> I guess first things first, I see what happens with this Crystal and Giant counter. Because if I get like Hexproof or um, a plus one, plus one counter or Lifelink, some nice things maybe happen here. Let's start there. X proof, hell yeah. Okay. So I am effectively at 5 life because of two Rift Bolts that are going to be pointed at me. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 easy mana this turn, which is Karn. I can turn it into 5 mana, but that still doesn't get me to like Trinisphere out of my sideboard, unfortunately. And if I play the monolith, it does cost me two life. How much life does this gain at a time? One life at a time, not great. Sky Sovereign's not bad. It's the Eidolon off the table. Note that my expensive cards aren't actually going to take this off the table. I think I just plus this, and if my opponent wants to send two Rift Bolts to kill this, that is a lot of life gain for me. Alright. Um, note that we can lose at any time to a price of progress. That's just something I, I realistically can't play around right now. Yep. Okay. I mean, that, that is what it is. We were about to turn too slow. Um, we're not going to be sideboarding much because a lot of our deck is going to be tutor targets for Karn. Um, I do want this Trinisphere in the deck. I probably just want the ability to cast another Walking Ballista. The rest of this stuff probably stays in the sideboard. Um, this is not a match that I need Crucible of Worlds for. And I can probably go down a metal worker reasonably. Uh, it's it's pretty cool on the play. 
but I'm going to end up behind the gun a lot of the time. And I don't want to be playing catch up versus burn. Turn one, Trinosphere. Or turn one, Chalice, turn two, Trinosphere. Um, either way, I'm keeping this hand. Actually, can I do both? Okay. Two mana. Up to three mana. I can go up to four mana? That doesn't get me a second play. I could turn one Karn. I don't know that that actually accomplishes anything just insane versus this deck. Uh, the one issue with Trinisphering that I lose out on a lot on these Grim Monoliths. I can just Chalice on one and then see if I draw a land next turn. If I had one land, I would be very comfortable Trinisphering here. Just go ahead and start here. All right, did not get rift bolted. Oh, baby. This is what everyone came here for, right? Now, I did do six damage to myself, but this should almost certainly win me the game. Um, turn's interesting. I can use it to turn Tronosphere into something that attacks, but that's quite awkward for me. I wonder if it's worth it to just make a 2-2 Ballista that I can just crash in with. Put my opponent on 5 damage a turn. I almost wish I, wish I had some sort of Voltaic key effect in the sideboard right now. Well, I, I kind of do, but not the way that I want. I think this is the point where I flop those cards onto the table and hope that this is good enough to win the game. It might not be. My opponent could just, like, exquisite firecraft me, exquisite firecraft me, fire blast me, and, like, that could be it. All right, I don't think I get to tap these Ancient Tombs here, unfortunately. I think I'm just passing the turn with five power in play. Yep. All right, so something like a Firecraft and Fire Blast will beat me.
So I drew a life gain card, but again, I don't think I get to tap these ancient tombs here. Yep. All right. One more live spell beats me. Can't be a creature. They started to pay costs for something, which makes me think that I am dead. All right. All right. So be it. Okay, I've kept my opening hand here, uh, which has three mana on turn two. My opponent revealed a Chancellor, so we're playing against Reanimator. Um, not having... A great turn one is maybe problematic here. My turn two will be Trinisphere. I think I want to play a Chalice on zero. Just in case some sort of like Lotus Petal based shenanigans are the difference between my opponent comboing off and not. And this also gets rid of a Chalice of the Void, or sorry, a Chancellor of the Annex trigger, rather. All right, so I would have done that anyway, but for different reasons. Now note, I can just play a Metal Worker and then threaten to do eight mana worth of bullshit the following turn. And just totally beat this Grizzlebrand. It really depends on how much my opponent can strip apart my hand over the next two turns. Oh, it's the contentious Faithless Looting Art. Hello. Well, if the Chalice would have resolved, it would have been good, but I would just, like, have to play the Cloud Post. Have any shot at being in the game. Okay. All fine. I think I do need to put the Metal Worker into play this turn, rather than try to do something somewhat disruptive like a Trinosphere. Now, my opponent knows about this Karn, which is a problem because if they realize that it can just like get Ensnaring Bridge and go ham, um, they can sacrifice their Grizzle brand via Cabal Therapy. Oh, they also could just die to a Walking Ballista next turn. One on the sideboard, right? No. Does this do anything? No, Creature of Planes. Okay, there's the Walking Ballista. The 2, 4, 6, 8... Oh, wait, sorry, it's artifact cards, not colorless cards. I can make six mana with it right now. I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total mana. Oh. Dude, they discarded an Ashen Rider. That's quite good. That gets rid of my Metal Worker. Now they can Cabal Therapy, get rid of my Karn, and blow up Cloud Post. What are you doing? Could have just sacrificed the Ashen Rider, Cabal Therapy, gotten rid of my land, and then brought it back, gotten rid of my other land. Oh, they just have two Cabal Therapies. Oh no, that, that, hmm. 
you just have more reanimation spells that don't hurt you. I think I have a main deck bridge that I can draw. Yeah, but I should be very dead instead of having a chance to draw live here. Uh, that's not going to do it, though. Just a little bit too slow here. All right. I would like three ley lines. I would like a trinosphere. I will probably board in one of Armad's Cryptor and Snaring Bridge. Don't know which one exactly. Like, I want my Karn to have a, a target that's great in the matchup, but I also want early disruption. I don't think I need to try and go infinite here to win. I think if I just play a lock piece and put some pressure on afterwards, that'll be fine. I think on the play where I can play out the Tormod's grip before my opponent gets a creature, this is fine to bring in. Crucible is not necessary. And then walking ballistas and maybe crystal and giants aren't super ideal. And maybe trim on one of those. This looks okay. This still gives me Karn for bridge. I want to do it the other way. And when I'm on the play... I leave the crypt in there and bring in the bridge. The bridge is more likely to be able to come down before their discard. And then I just have Karn on turn two or three for Graveyard Hate. Yeah. Maybe I do it this way on the play. Um, I think I can do better. This is turn one chalice on zero, turn two trinosphere, and then nothing. Um, this is a pretty darn good hand without the walking ballista. Question is, like, can I actually just do better? And I think a lot of the times I can. Yes, this is better. Yeah. This one didn't have a ley line, unfortunately, but uh, you can't have it all. This one has early chalice into threat and the ability to like play big mana stuff that I draw afterwards. Now, if our opponent is on a Serenity version of the deck, um, well, I'm playing Mud, and I will be sad. A Metal Worker. Is that better than Crystal and Giant here? Probably not, with no gas remaining. Now, the Crystal Giant has Menace, which is effectively going to be unblockable against my opponent's deck most of the time. Uh, 
Oh, very nice. Blow it up. What do you have that blows this up? Next turn, I would like to play a Chalice of the Void on two to lock out, like, Exhume, Animate Dead, and Serenity. Um... I guess means I'm just doing this this turn. I'm just confused about why my opponent fetched. It seems like they want lands right now. Yep. That's what I wanted to lock out with this chalice. Alright, um, so I basically got time locked for two mana here, because I can't play out any of the cards from my hand realistically here. Alright, so we'll see if my opponent can just go off after Plague Winding me. Worse than Plague Wind. What is it, like a scour glass? All right, one, two. So I guess I want to cast the chalice for one and make them entomb first, and then I show them Trinosphere. Okay. All right, opponent didn't play any spells. That's good for me. I just make a 5-5 five, five next turn and kill my opponent in two turns. In all likelihood. Another Serenity? Oh, okay, I was going to say, like, come on. That's nice. Faithful Sloating is the big red card that I care about. I'm going to knock my opponent off another Serenity, because Serenity, that would be the absolute worst case scenario. I'm not sure what my opponent needs to do to get out of this. Uh, it's hard for them to get a card into their graveyard right now. They could, like, reanimate my Crystal and Giant. Yeah. I guess this could roll some really good stats and be problematic. Okay. I still trample over for some damage. That just tells me that my opponent has a bunch of reanimation spells in hand. And that they're probably just going to try to repeat this cycle. I wonder if they have another white producing land, actually.
Not sure that they will. On five mana, they can't do something like unmask themselves and then reanimate a Grizzlebrand or something, so I think I'm good. All right, on the draw, what do I want to do regarding like the Tormod script? Do I still want to have that as something carnable, or do I want to have that as something I can just play out on turn one? I probably want to have it as something I can play out on turn one. So let's move this back to the board and call that good. The Karn is a little slow here, but I think it's fine. All right, great hand. Very happy with this. I'm going to just sit here for just a second and think about this hand. Like, this hand maybe is not great, when in reality it's pretty darn good. Um, in most situations, this is turn one leyline into turn two lodestone golem. Uh, there's some situations where that's not true. Uh, the easiest way for me to lose this game is probably my opponent using a discard spell on me and then reanimating the lodestone golem on turn one. Yep, unmask me. Oh, they just took Trinosphere. Great. Okay, I think I am supposed to play Ancient Tomb here to keep the dream of Lodestone Golem on turn two alive easily. Um, I guess the next question is, do I just want to play a 2-2 this turn? I think I do. Oh, did my opponent keep a no-lander? Sorry, I didn't even, like, realize that. Or did they see my wasteland and then not make a play? Overall, very happy with how this game's going. I think we've got this one uh, in very good shape. My opponent can't Serenity this turn because it costs three. Well, I guess they could if they have Lotus Petal. That would sting. Yeah, you're about to get Wastelanded off of that White Source, friend. Right? Nope. What are we doing? Oh. I see. Okay, I see. Pressure's on. So I float two mana here. 
I play a wasteland. I don't really care about Serenity because my opponent is just facing down lethal damage next turn. I think I wasteland them off of red or faithless looting. Right? If, if they go land and then play Serenity, I just have lethal. So let's take them off red. And play this Stone Coil. How will our robots fare? Probably pretty well. Nice. Okay, um, I have a bit of a slow hand here. Um, I get turn two Crystal and Giant, turn three Karn. I think that's good enough to be a keep. Never mind, I can go for a turn one Walking Ballista and try to kill that Delver now. That's fine with me, and if it gets a Counterspell, it gets a Counterspell. Most likely playing against Blue Red and Delver given this opener. Uh, in which case, my Ancient Tomb is a bit of a liability. Yep, Blue Red Delver. Um, the good news is many Blue Red Delver builds currently don't have Wasteland. This isn't true for all of them, but many of them don't. And so my lands might be a little bit safer than normal versus Delver. The bad news here is that like every time I tap this Ancient Tomb, it's just terrifying. Yeah, so now I need to either remove some creatures or, like, somehow get my hand empty for an ensnaring bridge. There's not a Lion's Eye Diamond in this big Karn wishboard, is there? No. Yeah. I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm just like on the draw versus Delver with a slightly slower deck. I can play Stone Coil Serpent for X equals 2, try to trade it for Delver, and play tapped Cloud Post so that I can try to do something else next turn. I could also play this around Daze, but I don't think I'm going to beat a Daze anyway, and so I think I need to get this land into play tapped. Uh, in all likelihood, though, like, this gets a Lightning Bolt or a, a Chain Lightning, and then I just take 5 damage and die. Yup. My opponent's start was uh, very good. I'm sure that's obvious, but damn. We're not going to get to the point where this Forsaken Monument can be gaining me meaningful amounts of life. Good god. Yeah, I'm just dead next turn. Yeah, I can play a Crystalline Giant. It puts me to two. Delver kills me in the air. Yep. Got Delvered. I think I would like to board out my Karns if I can. I'm not sure that I can, though. Yeah, I'm not sure that I can. Like, access to Ensnaring Bridge and Sky Sovereign. And maybe Ratchet Bomb seems important. All right. Um, on the play, Trinosphere is serviceable. On the draw, it's probably pretty bad. Might not be sideboarding for this matchup, unfortunately. Like, I can bring in another Trinosphere. I can just bring in a Ratchet Bomb. So 
My opponent's not playing Wasteland. I don't want this Crucible. I think I'm just going to turn that into another land. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I'm doing. That doesn't feel good. Uh, earn one crystal and giant does not seem like the card to go all in on. Uh, this hand is kind of worse than the last one. This is turn two crystal and giant or turn two metal worker. Is this worth going to five? Like, I do have four lands. I think this is worth going to five. Uh, my pain is immense. Um, I mean, I, I obviously I'm going to four, but my four card hand just has to be so beyond lucky in order to have a chance. Well, I'm keeping this. Are we going all in on a crystal and giant after talking about how that was a bad idea? Probably. Doesn't feel good. I'm going to keep a soul land that doesn't damage me and hope that the ability to just cast whatever I rip off the top puts me into an okay position to take over this game. Alright, Hexproof or plus one, plus one counter would be really appreciated here. Thank you. Thank you. We might be able to talk about, like, forgiving the, uh, the, the rough mulligan. Pain of Vapor. Fuck. I haven't seen Chain of Vapor in these lists, by the way. But it would be good for the sake of comedic timing. What's my opponent thinking about here? Like, what one mana blue card other than, like, literally Chain of Vapor could they have here? Or did they just step away? Okay. Lifelink? All right. Not bad. Sure. Bright Dragon not looking great in comparison to Crystal and Giant. But we're not going to underestimate uh, how out of control a Sprite Dragon can get. Like, that thing in two turns could just be the size of my Crystal and Giant or, or larger quite easily. There is a world where I want to consider taking some damage to untap this Grim Monolith. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that.
Like, I already have seven mana that does not involve Grim Monolith that doesn't cost me... Well, costs me life, but... I don't want to, like, untap it and then have the Grim Monolith get destroyed and lose out on uh, a decent amount of life for no real reason. Um... The Hexproof is the next counter that I'd like if uh, we're taking requests from the RNG engine. That way my Crystal and Giant can't get a Braided or Brazen Borrowed or Equivalent. Um, otherwise Vigilance would be sweet. I mean, you should swing with both because you're not blocking this. I see. So my opponent wants to hold back. So if they can cast one spell, pretty good. I can also just get like another piece of evasion, like flying. I don't know that I'm supposed to attack in here. I think I'm supposed to just, like, wait it out. Rample. Um, I don't think I'll attack here. Like, I'll, I'll wait them out. Like, first strike, death touch is a dream that can happen if we just keep this thing alive for a few turns. Uh, we're doing better than I expected for a mulligan to four. The initial crystal and giant um, plus one plus one counter, I'm sure, just kept our opponent from picking this thing off. I'm going to start to get a little more interesting if my opponent does decide to attack. Like, do I block? Probably not. Do I threaten, you know, an eight-point life swing on the way back? I've made life hard for my opponent. That's for sure. My opponent has found a second Sprite Dragon. They're willing to attack with that one. Sure. Oh, now I have Reach, which is cool. It's a real shame that I don't have actual uh, removal spells that I can be using here to pick off these things. Because if I did, and I could like try to make a fight in the middle of combat, uh, it'd be quite good for me. I have five of the, what is it, like ten counters? Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, plus one, plus one. Okay. We'll go with no blocks. Another one. Well, that's obviously quite good.
kind of feel like this other one gets bolted here. Venice Lifelink Reach Trample Vigilance. Pass. Like, the thing is that at the end of the day, I am still... Oh, that was beyond risky. Um, anyway, at the end of the day, I am still at 22 life. I think I can afford to play this conservatively. We'll see. Like, if, if I don't draw anything relevant for the rest of the game, like, I'll still get buried or whatever. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Alright, so that undoes the last six turns worth of stuff, and I die in two turns. Cool, oh, cool. What? Why did you not attack? Should have just taken a bajillion damage there. I mean, I'll take the free turn there. Like, I think my opponent literally just missed 12 damage. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, I can attack, they can jump block, they can go to five, I'll be dead in the air to two different things. Um, that's super unfortunate. I don't know, maybe I gave my opponent too much time, um, and Delver just has a better endgame than normal. Um, but I was kind of hoping that I would just, like, draw... Something of note at some point in this game. Uh, six lands, Mulligan. Um, this will be fine. It doesn't fit here. Probably Metalworker, unfortunately. Metalworker is just so slow for Legacy right now. I don't know that I can take a turn off from, like, not casting Trinisphere on turn three. So we're most likely playing against Elves, in which case the Trinisphere will be helpful. Very glad I wastelanded that, otherwise my opponent would have gone insane. Am I playing Trinisphere 100% of the time next turn? Probably. But I do have like 4 drops and such in the deck. 
Um, let's go ahead and play an Ancient Tomb and pass. No attack? Okay. I mean, cool. I'm quite happy with no attack against uh, my Ancient Tomb deck. That's a, that's a costly thing to play out here. This happens. We done? Is this concession lag? Yeah, this is concession lag. All right. Um, a walking ballista can come in. I might board in the ratchet bomb too. Crucible of Worlds Blast Zone is sort of interesting in this matchup. Crucible of Worlds Wasteland also fine. I don't think I have time for this. I want to leave Ratchet Bomb in the board so I have more effective copies of it. Or is like Ratchet Bomb for Karn? Just too slow, and I want to have it in my opener. Also, like, do I want more Trinospheres? I want more Trinospheres. Let's put this on the board, and I can wish for it. Then I'll board this in over, like, a Metal Worker. I could also consider Sorceress Spyglass. I think I'm good with this. Um, I've turned one nothing. Turn two, Grim Monolith for Metal Worker. Turn three, Big Ballista. Turn four, Big Ballista. This is okay against a fair hand and bad against a combo hand. With a Soul Land, this becomes much better. Let's mulligan. Turn one, City Chalice, one one. Turn two, Grim Monolith, plus Glimmer Post, and either Walking Ballista for two or Lodestone Golem. This is probably fine, and I pitch the Caracas here. I would love to draw Ancient Tomb. But I don't have to lose this City of Traders early to do the cool things. Still chalicing. I think I'm still chalicing. Also, our Shepherd um, does make these sorts of openers a little bit awkward, though. Oh, just that's it. I, I guess I could have decay. Two monolith, one. Glimmer Post, four total mana, play Lodestone, keep the second city around. Sounds great.
Yeah, you fetch for a dry armor now. That's okay. Another Dryad Arbor. More mana. This is not currently really castable because of my Lodestone Golem. This is not the Plague Wind that I wanted from this card, but it's what I'm getting here. It keeps them from accelerating extra via the Dryad Arbors, and maybe keeps them from making a land drop this turn. Alright, so they had Natural Order. This name artifact. Ooh. That's not great for me. That thing also has vigilance. Or don't have this right. Yep. You just have it like another natural order? Yeah, an Alistar Shepherd, sure. Feels bad. So I think I'm just dead next turn. Effectively or actually. I'm going to go ahead and throw in the towel here. I think I'm good with where everything's at. I think I'm going to go ahead and resubmit this. Turn one, Chalice. Turn two, Ballista for two. Turn three, Crystal and Giant. Seems fine. A powerful opener. But it's one where I'm really going to have minimal ability to deviate from my original plan. Um, but that, that kind of is what it is. Like, I can't really um, reasonably wasteland, for example, and just lose my City of Traders. Yeah, I think I'm staying the course here. We will uh we will kill this immediately. Now I can Karn next turn if that ends up being something that's good, but Karn is a lot less good when you don't really have mana to work with, and this whole double city of traders situation is very awkward.
All right. Um, a lot of ways to play this turn now. The Wasteland is enticing. I can play Grim Monolith, Crystal, and Giant. Attack with Walking Ballista, deal one damage. End of combat, destroy Dryad Arbor, and then Wasteland them, leaving me with three power and a Chalice on one, but no ability to cast other spells this game. That's probably fine. Like, with a single mana, this Karn really does nothing. I think this double sinkhole situation is better than, like, putting another counter on the walking ballista. That's something else I could do this turn. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and put my finisher into play. Blow up Dryad Arbor. Actually, I should... Oh, no, I don't have to worry about crop rotation because... Uh, Alice. Okay. So hopefully this keeps them from getting established um, for the rest of the game. My line is horrendous if they just, like, rip Allosaurus Shepard here. God damn it. That's really frustrating. Oh yeah, I'm totally going to die. <laughs> yep. That's uh, really frustrating. Yeah, so this is 4 or 5 mana. This already basically activates Allosaurus Shepard. I think I just need to keep battling and just hope that I hit lifelink or something. I, I don't know. Like, realistically, my opponent's just going to make a land drop and I'm going to die. Uh, but I don't see this game favoring me as it goes along. I just need to try to finish it out here. Actually, I guess they already have the land they need. They can just bounce the bio with Quarian Ranger. Yeah. I think I am on literal zero outs. That's really frustrating. Like, my opener was such that I had to destroy two of my own lands. I destroyed two of their lands and dealt with the thing that made my Chalice bad, and then they had two more copies of something that made Chalice bad plus Cradle. Um, if they didn't have the Cradle, like, maybe I can just race them and get four attacks in, um, but that was pretty brutal. Uh, okay, turn two. I have three mana. Monolith four mana, Monolith five mana, Monolith six mana. Um, this is too many monoliths, but, like, I just get to make a lodestone on turn two, I guess I keep it, question mark. 
Um, it looks like my opponent is mulliganing into oblivion. Um, in which case, we'll see if lodestone on turn two is good enough or not. Oh, this is kind of a weird hand. if we get wastelanded. Probably not on a mulligan that deep. Okay. Thalia? Oh, just Thalia's lieutenant. It's an aggro draw. That's fine. I'm going to make just very large stone call serpents on future turns. Let's do this playing towards that line. This is three mana. Gains me one mana. Okay, so like, do I want to play Lodestone here, or do I just want to play Grim Monolith and then just play a Stone Coil Serpent? It'd be totally fine trading Lodestone or Champion next turn if my opponent lets me do that. Let's just do this. I mean, I would rather a source of plowshares hit Lodestone Golem than uh, my Stone Quail. Alright, so I have three, six, seven, uh, eight potential mana. Do I want to split that over two bodies and play the Lodestone and one small Stone Quail? Or just one lo large one this turn, one large one next turn? I don't know. The lodestone's probably kind of nice. Keeps my opponent from double spelling. Let's assume that its existence is fine. So that gets me to this. And now, like, do I want to make a 4 4? I think making a 4 4 is fine. Another source of plowshares. Okay. Fair. Alright, am I attacking this turn? Probably attacking this turn. I think Lodestone is quite good here. I'm going to go ahead and play one out again. And save this Stone Coil Serpent for the following turn. I just, I just want this creature to be massive. I don't want something that will rumble a little bit with what they've got going on here. I want something that will dwarf it. You have another one? <laughs> Sure, that's fine. All right. Will I trade Lodestone for Champion of the Parish plus four damage? Probably. 
I don't have to, though. Like, the Lodestone becomes less interesting once um, this Ether Vial is in play. I also could just chomp. Hmm. I kind of like this effect being in play, though. Like, I might be willing to trade it the following turn. I don't think I'm willing to trade it this turn. Big. The trample damage here is pretty meaningful. Oh, we're just done. <laughs> we're just done. Okay, that's fair. All right. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. I just felt half a turn too slow in almost every matchup. Um, the metal workers in particular. I I don't think this is like you know twenty uh, thirteen fourteen legacy where you can just like take a turn off to play this metal worker and then expect to go ham with it. There's so many efficient answers right now, both in terms of counterspells and removal, and, like, threats have gotten better and faster. Um, so I, I definitely felt awkward playing Metalworker. Um, I, like, when I used to play this deck, like, eons and eons ago, like, you would tap a Metalworker and then you would, you know, make a Blightsteel and a Steel Hellkite in the same turn, and I just didn't feel that same sort of thing from this league. Um... I feel like some of the singletons maybe shouldn't be in the deck. Like, the singleton crucible without a way to tutor for it seems a little weird. Uh, same with the Staff of Domination. The singletons lose out on a little bit of their utility without the Kaldalth of Forge Masters around. Um, the sideboard definitely feels a little bit weird. I don't, like, you don't have much of an ability to sideboard. You can adjust things ever so slightly, but it's not like, okay, here are the five cards that I get to bring in for Delver. Those sorts of situations aren't around. Um, so, like, this was a fun league. I enjoyed it, and we, like, powered through this league. Um, I, so, like, I think one way or another, if you want to, like, sit down and play a fast artifact league, this is a, this is a fine choice for that. Um, but I, I felt like I had a wee bit of a consistency problem. Um, and a slight speed problem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know, please click the like button. That sort of thing helps me out a lot. And if you're really enjoying this deck, remember the deck list is in the video's description, as is my donation information if you want to get your own deck on stream. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you again tomorrow.